Guess who's back? Back, back again. Hi guys, um, this is Demon Rants, and uh, today, uh, you know, I know I've been gone for um, quite a couple of weeks. My last rant was, you know, the broniest one, and I don't know what happened. It, it just didn't get as, it didn't just didn't get as popular. It got a lot of dislikes. I've disabled them, and I'll keep them that way because Bronies just looked at the title and then disliked straight away like idiots. So I don't know. But anyway, um, we're going to continue uh, my series of uh, Tekken reviews. And if you're a fan of the series, then stick around and I hope you'll enjoy. But anyway, uh, this um, this is the sixth uh, canonical instalment in the series. came out in 2009 and this is Tekken 6. Now, um, notice how it says PS3 over there. This, yes, this one was the... Um, Probably the, the second one to come on 7th uh, generation consoles. I know the first one was Tekken 5 Dark Resurrection. That one came out, which was just kind of like a remake. This is actually an, another um, a, a sequel, even though it barely even has a plot in the first place. But, uh, yeah, and it's also um, the first um, Tekken game on an Xbox console. You know, it's on Xbox 360. So if you own those consoles, uh, you should probably check, pick it up. Um, because um, I think every other game before this one, even Dark, um, Dark Resurrection, was uh, only on PlayStation. I think the only exception was Tekken Advance and the Game Boy Advance, and those crappy card games that nobody played. I don't know, maybe some people did, but not me. But anyway, uh, this is Tekken 6, and... Um, I'll, my god, wow, this one was just... This one was a big letdown. I also want to... I also want to tell you how um, this is one of my newest ones that I've picked up, one of my newer games I've picked up, so I don't have as much memories, I don't have as much nostalgia, well, barely any nostalgia, I only started playing last year, but you know, I don't have as much to say about this one, because I, I don't have that much fond memories, but anyway, uh, as we always do, we're going to start with the story, and um, one of the worst aspects of this game is rather than the traditional arcade mode where you get a prologue of every character, you know, a prologue of the character, and then you play through some stages, fight the boss, and then get the ending, well, instead, you have to play this stupid scenario campaign. Now, um, the, I'm going to tell you like the main story, that's that you have to actually play this weird scenario campaign to actually get the story and unlock, and unlock stuff, you know, kind of force it down your throat. And then Harada, you know, is all like, oh, this is the biggest, um, biggest Tekken side game, or, no, the, the biggest Tekken beat him up ever. And he's, like, advertising all this stuff, and it's like, nobody cares. We only care about the fighting. And it's like they put all the effort into the damn mode. This mode, but not into the actual fighting. But anyway, uh, the story is that, you know, we have all three Mishimas on the cover. Even though they don't actually do much in this game. But what happened is last time in uh, Tekken 5, Jin won the tournament. And, well, uh, you know, he takes up the, just like all the other family members, he takes up the Mishima fortune and turns evil. Yes. I mean, right now, Jin in this game is like Darth Vader levels of dictator evil, evilness. You know, he kills a bunch of people, you know, uh, Miguel's sister, daughter, I don't know, some female relation or something. But anyway, you know, he kills people, you know, he's got money and, you know, he's all greedy and stuff like that. And he's become just like his father and his, and his grandfather. But I don't like this story because Jin... He's supposed to be the protagonist of the game. Yeah, I will agree that he's become a bit more emo, like in the newer Tekken series. But he's not evil. And I hate that. I hate that. How he's turned all evil and stuff like that. And he's almost the sub-boss in this game. We're going to get to the boss later who's an idiot. I hate him, that boss. But anyway, um, you know, Kazuya is one of the few characters who's still awesome in Tekken. He's still awesome. And Hihachi is a complete joke, but Hihachi, he should, he will always be the main villain of Tekken. Not these two. I guess Kazuya is sort of like badass evil, but Jin, that's not what Jin does. So instead of playing as a Mishima character as the main character, you know, I, I get, well, it's a fighting game, you can play as anyone you want. But you know, the main characters, rather than being Jin, you get this guy over here. Lars. 
and I don't like him. Pretty much, his his slick is that he's this Metal Gear Solid kind of agent person, and he's got a completely crazy look, and uh, except that he's a generic white guy, but yeah, he's got a crazy hairstyle, and he looks like a Marvel superhero and fights like one. But the thing is that he has no personality. Other than that, he's the good guy. You're supposed to root for him. You know, Harada's changing shit up, pretty much. You're supposed to like this character that we know nothing about. So, because this guy has no personality, we get this chick as his sidekick, Alyssa. Another character who doesn't deserve to be in the Tekken series. Just like Lily, just like Lucky Chloe in Tekken 7, which I think that one's going to be a letdown as well. And, but but rather than them two, woo, she's a robot. She's like this Moe anime girl. But look, she's a robot and woo and all that kind of stuff. You know, she has cool fighting moves, I guess, with chainsaws and all that. But she's just a boring, annoying anime girl. So, another crap character. So, anyway, you have to play as Lars. And I think later on you can pick the, the other characters, so thank God. But... That doesn't even matter. You have to like play for the entire game to get the good characters. So um, that's pretty much it. You play. It's like a standard beat 'em up. You go around. You get your health bar, and you just it's a three D beat 'em up. You beat up robots. It's mostly just jacks and grunts, like in the other Tekken Force mini games, which this is supposed. To, which apparently this is the main attraction in this one. But I don't like it because that's like. That's the only way you can get unlockable costumes, you know, unlockable endings and stuff like that. And actually, there is a type of traditional story mode, and it's in arena mode. I haven't unlocked it yet, because I don't even want to finish scenario campaign. It's where you, um, arena mode, it's, it's the standard thing. You still get a prologue, but there's no voice actor. You know, there's no voiceover guy. And uh, this time, you only get four or five rounds. You have to fight this annoying, crappy robot... Who kills you straight away, but, you know, I guess you don't have to fight her. She's called Nancy, but it's a robot, so it's probably a guy. Um, then you have to fight Jin, who has this weird rage mode and beats you all the time. And then Azazel, who is hands down the most cheapest, most laziest boss in the series. Azazel is, I think, in history, is like some kind of Jude. It's part of Judaism, you know, he's sort of like the devil to them, Azazel. But in this game... He really has no reason to be there. He's not that much part of the story. He's just this big, giant chicken who's got really cheap moves. I mean, Jim Patchy may have had the fireball of death and the stunning moves, but he was very important to the story and quite likeable. Azazel is none of that. He's just a generic Resident Evil Yu-Gi-Oh monster. And, yeah, that's that's pretty much it about him. I think he's plot... Part of the story is that he's sort of like where the devil gene comes from, since he's all purple and stuff like that. And some of the endings, which are mostly joking, don't have any real matter. The characters get this blue orb from his body and then they get the devil gene. That's about it. You know, there's other crappy endings and stuff like that. But the endings are really short in this game. Some of them aren't even a minute long. But yeah, that's the story aspect. Now we're going to get into the fighting, the main thing. And the fighting is actually pretty good. You know, the graphics department, I, I don't really like the style of this game. It feels a bit too oily. It feels like the characters are, like, smothered in oil. Which is also a problem in Tekken Tag Tournament 2, in my opinion. But, uh, you know, the fighting is pretty much just standard Tekken, really. You know, it, it's nothing... It, it's kind of almost... in a, <laughs> Sorry, guys. Identical to Tekken 5, really, the fighting. So there isn't much to say, and I don't like that. How, but it's kind of just too similar. But it also did bring this thing called Rage Mode, which it makes it really cheap. It's where, you know, like once you're losing, once your health bar is quite low down, your, your health bar starts to go red, and that means you can easily defeat your enemies, which I find this a really cheap tactic. It's very broken, and I don't like it. And there's the broken bound system. If you thought juggling was bad in Tekken 5, it's insane in this one. In Tekken Tag Tournament 5. Tekken Tag Tournament 2. Sorry. But yeah, the juggling is, I guess nowadays, is like the main attraction of Tekken. Just juggling. It kind of makes things unfair. Kind of, It's not good for beginners. But yeah, the fighting is pretty normal stuff. But it doesn't have that much... I guess it's fun and flashy, but it doesn't have that much substance. 
Um, what else to say? And the modes are pretty much standard. You do actually get an arcade mode, but like I said, all the prologues and the endings are in the um, arena mode in scenario campaign. But yeah, standard modes, time attack, survival, team battle. But I, I would just play Tekken 5 anyway to get them. The online is one of the few good parts of the game. But I mostly blame my internet connection for the problems, you know, about going online and not making matches and stuff like that. But this, I don't think it has, it is on Xbox 360 because there aren't really many fighting game fans on Xbox. But um, this one, uh, there's there are still plenty of people playing on PS3. You can get some really good matches. So that's the only reason I'd still play it these days to get to play online and stuff like that. And even then, I'm not much of an online player. And it was also the, um, actually, ta Tekken Dark Resurrection Online for PS3 was the first one to use this feature, but it it closed down and that's pretty much it. But you can actually still play this one, so it's it's good. The new characters, when we're nearly getting to the end, the new characters are pretty lame. We get the Lars and the Alyssa boring characters we're supposed to like. Uh, then we get some other characters like Bob, who... Bob is pretty much just a fat guy, that's about it, but he has a really good fighting style and I always use him online, I'm kind of like top tier with him. Uh, Miguel is a Spanish guy and he kind of uses um, kind of uses brawler style moves like Q from Street Fighter 3, so he's, he doesn't have that much of a personality but he's cool and he has a decent fighting style. Uh, Leo is this kind of like cross dresser, it's like this girl and she dresses as a boy. This German girl, she's pretty boring. I guess she fights well. Alyssa's this weird. I, I don't know who she is. This Persian. I don't. I don't know. Um, belly dancer. I don't know. But she moves her body around and she does all this, all these crazy moves. She's a bit like a spider. She's all right. And um, I. I think that's about it. The bad thing is that the the um. The, the roster, it just feels really, really convoluted. Like, there's, you know, all the old characters, most of the old characters return anyway, but there's just too much. But Armor King, for a start, Armor King is actually back in this game. I know in Dark Resurrection he was, but he actually has a story, sort of. I don't know it, but Armor King's back, so that's a plus. I will, that's definitely a good thing. You know, all the great characters like King. Yoshimitsu, you know, Kazuya and, well, pretty much these three, they're in the games to play as, so, um, it's a standard fighting game, but it just feels like such a disappointment, it feels really bare bones. When I review Tekken Tag Tournament 2, that's even going to have a more positive review than this one, but I'd give it about a 7 out of 10, compared to the others, which were just great, except for maybe Tekken 1, that was a bit, but it has an excuse, it's really old, but, I, that, that's, that's it, really. Really, guys, I can't mention that much. You have to play, so you have to play the stupid scenario campaign to do most of the stuff, and that that's really let me down. But and I don't know how Tekken Seven is going to be, but I'm kind of scared it's going to be like this. You know, just kind of stupid. Most of the characters are complete buffoons now. Also, I forgot to mention the story of Lars. The only reason why Lars really matters is that apparently he's sort of related to the Mishimas. But it gives, but pretty much the excuse is that they just want to fill the roster with Mishima characters. Just like how Mortal Kombat has the ninjas and Street Fighter has the Shotos. They just want to fill the roster with Mishimas. But anyway, um, that's, that's it guys. That's my review of Tekken 6. But it's been quite long, even though I haven't had that much to say. But um, yeah... Good online, a decent fighter, but in terms of story, and in my opinion, I think Tekken is one of the better story-related fighting games. You know, along with Mortal Kombat, that has a good story. But now that they've done this, it's just become lame. So, that's it, guys. That's my review. Next, I will do Tekken 10 Tournament 2, which is another, uh, you know spin-off game i guess but it was much better than this one but still has problems so anyway um thank you for watching and uh goodbye